What is up everybody? This is Katrina from MCAT We Trust and this is the first video I am doing for 2022. And while normally I do these where you can see me on camera, I am not doing that today because I feel kind of eh. And so I don't really want to be on camera. However, Wrestle Kingdom 16 had night one and I wanted to give my quick recap review and thoughts on night one. Also, before I start, I think it's important to tell you that there will be some spoilers. So if you have not watched Wrestle Kingdom 16 Night 1, this is probably the point for you to kind of pause the video and come back afterwards to hear it. So before I get into the match cards, please don't forget to click the notification bell to get any new videos from me on my channel. So the very first match was a pre-show match, which was a New Japan Rambo style match where there was a bunch of competitors in the ring and whoever won would go and advance to the KOPW 2022 finals on Wrestle Kingdom Night 2. So at the end of the match, we wind up getting Toru Yanu, Shinsuke, Fujinami, and Sima as the four that would make it to Wrestle Kingdom Night 2. I thought the match itself was pretty solid. Um, I did like it, and so, you know, you guys tell me your thoughts on that match. Next, we had the singles match with Yao versus Sho, and I did predict that Yo would win uh, the match after Sho kind of, like, turned on him a few months ago. I just kind of felt like this was a match for Yo to kind of get his retribution, and he did, so he won that match, and I enjoyed the match. It was pretty good as well. Next up after that was the Bullet Club members El Fantasmo, Ishimori, and Kenta versus Taguchi, Rocky Romero, and Tanahashi, my guy. Now, I wanted Tanahashi's team to take this solely because the ace is my guy. You know, he's always on the Instagram with his food and getting his hair laid and slayed at the salon. And I saw that this is my guy. You know, he was one of the first guys I liked watching G1 in 2019 from New Japan, I was like, you know what, no matter what match he's in, this is going to be the homie. Unfortunately, um, it didn't work out that way, and I was very sad that, you know, his team lost. He actually got disqualified during the match because Kenta and the shenanigans, so it was a solid match, but I was very, very unhappy with the results on that one. Next up on the card was a three-on-three -three match with the United Empire, which is Okan, Will Ospreay, and Jeff Cobb versus Sonata, Bushi, and Nato. Now, I like Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb is definitely the homie. I think he's an amazing wrestler. However, I am not really fond of the fact that he is part of the United Empire stable. I just... <laughs> all that when I first heard it, just completely didn't like it. And they did wind up taking the match, which I was kind of annoyed by it because I kind of wanted Nato, you know, he's kind of been, you know, not in, I guess, major, major storylines as a, like, solo. Recently, it seemed like he's been more involved with his group. And so I kind of was kind of pulling for them to win this, but they didn't. And so you had, like, Will Ospreay and Okan get in the ring and talk a bunch of blah, blah, blah about how they will all be dripping in gold and they're going to be running to Japan. And I was just like, oh, shut up, Okan. Like, let's not do the shenanigans. And so, once again, I did not, my prediction was completely incorrect on that one. It made me sad because I was really hoping that Nato and his group pulled it off, but they didn't. But, you know, what can you do about that? Next up, we had Shibata versus Rin Narita, which I believe is a student of the LA Dojo in New Japan. So it was kind of like teacher versus student, which I liked. So while Shibata did have his match versus Zack Sabre uh, last year, this was a whole different thing to kind of see Shibata at Wrestle Kingdom. You know, Shibata is an amazing wrestler, and so to kind of see him back in his element, like, ready to just do what needs to be done was amazing. And you get a little bit emotional, a little choked up, because, you know, a few years ago, we wasn't even sure if we would even get Shibata again. 
like wrestling at all in any capacity. And so it's nice to kind of see him. I did predict that Shibata would win the match, and he did. You know, he definitely did. And I thought it was a really, really good match. Probably one of my favorites throughout night one. Next up, we have the Never Open Weight Championship match. Um, it was Ishii versus Evil. I really wasn't a fan of this match, which makes me sad because I do think both guys are pretty solid wrestlers. But I don't know. It just really wasn't feeling the match as much as I wanted to. And we also got a new Never Open Weight Champion because Evil did win via pinfall against Ishii and so I, I was hoping that Ishii would have kept his belt but you know once again it's one of those situations like well what can you do now that the match is over you know so there is that then we had the IWGP heavyweight tag team championship matches which was the dangerous techers which is Tachi and Zack Sabre Jr versus Chaos which is Gato and Yoshihashi and this was another title change after the match with Chaos beating the Tekker, Dangerous Techers and um, becoming the new IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. I really had, it was an okay match. I don't particularly like Zack Sabre too much. I just feel like he's not as interesting as some of the other match wrestlers on rest New Japan. But um, it was okay, I guess. But new champions. Then we had the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. And this match I was actually really excited about. It was El Desperado versus Hirumu Takahashi. And Takahashi is my guy. He technically never lost the belt. It was an injury that, you know, caused him to kind of have to let the belt go. And it was vacant for a while. And so I was hoping that, you know, Takahashi would win this match because he technically never lost it. And there was also some saying that El Desperado had to kind of prove that he deserved to be champion also since Takahashi never lost the belt. Unfortunately, El Desperado did retain the match. Excuse me. He retained uh, the belt. Um... And it made me sad because I was really hoping Takahashi would um, win this and become champion again. Hopefully, we'll still get that at some point in 2022, so fingers crossed. And last but not least, we have the main event of night one, which was for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship with Shingo Taki as who's champion versus Mr. Drip himself, O. Kata. And so, you know, Shingo has really been doing, you know, good with the belt. I felt like he was a pretty good and solid champion. But again, Okada is my guy. And I just let me pause for a moment to just, I feel like me and the audience, you guys just need to appreciate how drip worthy Mr. Okada is. is. It just... Every year, he comes to Wrestle Kingdom just dripping, 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 just putting everybody's dress game to shame, and just making me feel like, okay, Okada, I am not worthy to see your drip. He came in with the white and gold. His robes had the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling on it, which I thought was super amazing. And last year, I felt like I rambled on and on about his uh, Wrestle Kingdom gear. Uh, so he just always stepped it one more up above every year. And it's just like, wow, Okada, you just hurt. You just shining on everybody, just stunting on them, stunting. So, you know, anyway, it was a really, really, really good match. I really appreciated it. And as necessary, Okada did win and become the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. He did say goodbye to my favorite IWGP Heavyweight belt. I was hoping that this would be the moment for him to like kind of bring the belt back because I'm really not a fan of the new belt design. I'm like, <laughs> you know, just not feeling it too much. Um, but you know, he is now the champion, and now he goes on to night two to go against Will Ospreay. And I know there's some Will Ospreay fans, and that is fine, but let me tell y'all, Okada better take Will and just give him the business all in the ring. He better, you know, do everything necessary, the Rainmaker doing everything he can to make sure he walk out at night two being the champion. And that's who I predicted to win anyway, because Okada is my guy. So, anyway. 
so anyway thank you guys for joining me on my video not video as you cannot see my face <laughs> but tell me in the comments how did you feel about night one are you excited for night two and give me all your thoughts i cannot wait to hear it and until next time guys i'll catch you later